The patterns for constructive and destructive interference from two point sources is, are actually quite regular, and we want to talk about now the mathematical relationship about where they occur. If you recall, two point sources, each oscillating in the water side by side, in, in phase with one another, going, in other words, going up at the same time and down at the same time, create a series of construct locations of constructive and destructive interference all throughout the water around them. These are referred to as nodal locations or antinodal locations. And they're numbered. There's a series of antinodes all along the line connecting the, or separating the two point sources uh, that occur regularly along here. And these are numbered the first uh, antinodal line, which is m equals 0. But these also occur off to the side at m equals minus 1 or m equals plus 1 at a certain angle, or off the side even further, at, or, which is called m equals 2 or m equals minus 2 at a certain angle. The nodes all lie, lie along lines in between the two, any two of the antinodal lines, and these are also numbered. They're sometimes numbered with a half integer. So there's m equals a plus a half, m equals minus a half or m equals 1 and a half, and m equals y is 1 and a half. We'll explain the numbering scheme of these things shortly. We'll also develop a mathematical equation that relates the features of these patterns relative to the wavelengths of the wave. In other words, how it is you can predict where these nodal lines or antinodal lines are going to occur. It will be assumed that we have wave sources that are producing waves with identical frequencies. In other words, the two point sources are going up and down exactly at the same rate and therefore they also have the same wavelength. So let's compare what's going on for, between point, two point sources, S1 and S2, at point location A. S1 is equal to five wavelengths away from point location A, whereas S2 is now, if you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six wavelengths away from location A. Point A is a location of an antinode. Notice that the two, two paths differences here are separated by one wavelength, and that's where the antinode occurs. So what's happened, as we've said, is that the two locations, S1 and S2, are each separated from A by an even number of wavelengths, either five or six wavelengths and the difference between them is one wavelength. Let's look at what happens to some other nodal and antinodal locations. Here's point B out there in the wavefront. Point B is also on an antinodal line. It's actually on the first antinodal line away from the center. Notice that location B is three wavelengths away from point source S1, and it's four wavelengths away from point source S2. The difference between these two path lengths is one wavelength, because three minus four is one. Let's take another location, point C. Point C is on the second antinodal line. In other words, the zeroth is right up the center. There's the first right there, and this is along the the second antinodal line. Point C is four wavelengths away from point source S1, and it's six wavelengths away from point source S2. Notice the difference in these two path difference, path lengths is two wavelengths, and that's the second nodal line, excuse me, next second antinodal line. There's a pattern emerging here. Point D is on a nodal line. It's a place where destructive interference occurs because that's a place where a crest, the th solid line, is meeting a trough, the thin line. So point D is, in fact, on the first nodal line. And point D is a location five wavelengths away from source S1, but only four and a half wavelengths away from source S2. Notice that point D is closer to S2 than it is to S1. These two separations of point D from either S1 or S2 are different from one another by a half a wavelength, in fact, by half of a wavelength. 
other antinodal locations are always going to be a wavelength or an integer number of wavelengths away, and other nodal wavelengths are always going to be a half integer or multiple of a half integer of wavelengths away. Point E is on the second nodal line. It's formed as a wave crest travels three and a half wavelengths from S1, and a trough travels five wavelengths from S2. Notice that point E is closer to S1 than it is to S2. The difference in wavelengths between these two paths is in fact minus one half of one and a half wavelengths. That's the second antinodal line. Our examples generalize in the following way, that the path difference between the two sources to a given location, which we'll call PD for path difference, is always going to equal a multiple of the wavelength. If M is an integer, like an even multiple of wavelengths, then we're on an antinode and constructive interference occurs. If M is a half integer, then we have a multiple of half wavelengths, which separate the two sources, and a node or destructive interference occurs. The number m tells us exactly how much the two sources are out of phase at a particular line of either nodes or antinodes. And the sine of m tells us which source is closer to the particular point. So again, our equation is PD equals m lambda. Let's notice what happens at various locations along the interference pattern. Whenever a point is along an antinodal line, the two sources are a multiple of wavelength out of phase. That means like if we took point J right here, this is on the M equals minus one line. S1 is a location of six wavelengths out of, uh, away from uh, point J. S2 is a total of seven wavelengths away from SJ, uh, point J. And notice what happens. As we get seven or six wavelengths away and we get to point J, these two waves are in phase and there's crests meet crests which is kind of our intuition about what happens when you're at an antinode. And furthermore, point K, which is just further out on that line, would be six and a half wavelengths away from S1, but, and seven and a half wavelengths away from S2. We would have a trough meet a trough, which again is our intuition about what happens along an antinodal line, because I have constructive interference. At point L, I'm again on an antinodal line, and I'm either six wavelengths away from S1 or eight wavelengths away from S2. This is the second antinodal line. I again have constructive interference because crests are meeting crests. Whenever a point is along a nodal line, the two sources are a multiple of half wavelengths out of phase, though. Let's examine what happens at point M. This is along an a nodal line, so destructive interference should occur. Point M is a location of four wavelengths away from source S2. One, two, three, four. But it's three and a half wavelengths away from S1. One, two, three, and there's the half. So indeed, you have destructive interference, and now you have a crest from S2 meeting a trough from S1. Point N is likewise a location of destructive interference. It's along the second nodal line. And it is four and a half wavelengths away from S1, or six wavelengths away from S2. And again, a trough from one wavefront meets a crest from the other. That's when destructive interference occurs.